my humble salutations to the supreme consciousness in each one of you pranam good evening i'm sure all of you have come from a rushed environment some traffic jams here and there so if you don't mind can we just do a small meditation of 2 minutes shall we do that okay all of you can just sit in a relaxed way gently close your eyes no tension anywhere in the body you can keep your hands on your lap if possible try to witness whatever thoughts come to your mind for a while just be a witness of whatever thoughts come experience the true bliss experience the joy joy of silence different kind of thoughts will keep coming to your mind just be a witness much Mr. Vasavada Mr. Divyesh Radia distinguished teachers friends ladies and gentlemen the topic of karma yoga is so much talked about by various people all of you also seen the debates going on on karma yoga everybody in the world thinks that he or she knows what the karma yoga is but usually one finds that this is the least understood concept people use it in different context in whatever way they see this concept without any authenticity of scriptures and that's why i always used to feel that there is a need to talk about this topic you must have heard this discussion i will just give you an example there is a discussion going on about uh, vrata to be done by somebody vrata in the sense penance you know kabhi fasting karte hai kabhi koi mandir ja ke kuch puja karte hai kabhi koi bhajan mein jate hai all these things are being discussed suddenly one rich businessman will come and say that no 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 i don't do all this i only believe in karma yoga i do my work now do you think that the kind of the work this businessman is doing is necessarily karma yoga it is not because karma yoga has got lot of ingredients 
in order to be called a karma yog you require to follow all those ingredients and there is very less clarity about it so i thought we'll talk about the six dimensions of karma yog today there is another misnomer going around most people think that karma yog is doing your work without expectation of any fruit or without any fruits whatsoever now if that is so i as an officer of government who is taking salary from the government am i bad from doing karma yog because i am getting a salary it is a sakam karma it is an activity in which i do expect my salary to come it's a sakam karma so most people have a misnomer that it is only the niskam karma which is karma yog i discuss this with my spiritual mentor and i was very happy to find an answer from him because this was bothering me also that is it possible to do sakam karma also with karma yoga attitude to life and he said yes it is possible very much possible for most people doing niskam karma is not an option available isn't it how many of us can actually manage to do niskam karma karma without any expectation of fruit we have a family to maintain we have lots of things to do and when my spiritual mentor told me yes it is possible i was very happy and then he explained to me what is this sakam karma with the attitude of karma yog that you can do and i'm going to pass down this wisdom to you today this is not my wisdom to be very frank it has come from a very learned person who happens to be my spiritual mentor he says if you follow six conditions six dimensions if you understand of karma yoga then you can surely do karma yoga while remaining in whatever occupation you are that's possible very much but before i come to the first second third fourth fifth sixth somebody may ask a question why should i do karma yoga why just because the scripture say you should do karma yoga no it doesn't agree with me why should i do karma yoga i am happy as it is somebody may say if you are happy as it is you don't need to do karma yoga certainly not but how many of us can put our hand on the heart and say that yes i am the happiest person around how many of us can say that very few and why so because we have our own problems every day struggle of life to deal with people to manage our goals to manage our activities to manage our time to manage our family to manage our society connections everything there are too many things to look after in the midst of all this there is an element which is missing and which is peace and happiness we do our work but is it work or is it drudgery please think about it is it a work which gives you a lot of satisfaction and happiness or is it a work which you want to just get done with isko finish karo khatam karo chalo isko chalo aaj isko khatam kar dete hain has exam puri hui good the exam is over if this is the kind of relief you get at the end of the exam or at the end of finishing your day after a hectic schedule that thank god today's day is over then you are certainly not finding happiness out of your work isn't it do you agree so why karma yog you tell me we need to do karma yog so that we can find bliss in whatever we are doing we can be happily living we can be happily doing our work this is the first and fundamental thing about karma yog if you actually follow the principles of karma yog in your life 
I am sure you will find a lot of difference in your entire, entire life, you know. I have observed this in my own self, you know. I have been observing how it makes us more and more happy. There is no, there is no grief whatsoever once you have a karma yoga attitude to life. And not for once you are worried about anything. This is the best part of karma yoga. Not even once. I no more worry about what this minister will think or what somebody else will think. No more I think about it. So this is what I am sure would happen to all of you also. And I will try my best to explain this principle slowly, steadily, so that you can follow them. Are you all okay with my speed of delivery? You are okay? All of you? Piche? Okay. Friends, the first principle, let me come directly to the first principle. The first dimension of Karma Yoga is whatever you do, whatever activity you do, that should not transgress the boundaries of socio-ethical code of conduct of the society. That is the first and fundamental requirement. If you are a businessman and if you are exploiting people, you are cheating the government, this is not Karma Yoga. If you are a big dani, you have an Annakshetra running, but all the money that you get is coming from an illegal business, then this is not Karma Yoga. So the actions which are prohibited by the dharma, dharma in the sense of socio-ethical code of conduct of the society. And every society has its own socio-ethical code of conduct. It is nothing to do with religion. All societies have got their own socio-ethical code of conduct. How do you find out what is a socio-ethical code of conduct? Is it relative to a person or is it absolute? This is a question you may ask me. My answer to that is simple, one sentence reply. Socio-ethical code of conduct means what you don't want others to do unto you, you also don't, you should not do to others. Isn't it? Do you agree? Now this is what is socio-ethical code of conduct of society. If you don't want your neighbor to sort of harass you, you also don't harass anybody else. This is the thing, simple thing. So this, now the businessman who was talking about Karma Yoga, he would be probably breaking this first condition itself. I don't know whether he is following the other five conditions. He is saying, I am doing Karma Yoga. I don't do anything else, na tap, na jap, na bhajan, kuch nahi. I only do karma yoga. But is he following this condition? We need to ask that question. He might be probably breaking this one itself. Simple? Agreed? All of you? Okay. Let's come to the second dimension. The second dimension of karma yoga is, whatever role you perform in the society, in your office, in your family, that role should be performed with utmost diligence, utmost diligence, without any carelessness, no carelessness, absolutely. And I am sure you will identify with the second dimension because the most popular definition of Karma Yoga, which is given in Bhagavad Gita, is Yoga Karmashu Kaushalam, which says that efficiency in your own work itself is karma yoga. Efficiency in whatever you do is itself karma yoga. So this is the second dimension of karma yoga. Now what is this role that we play? Look, the role that you play in the society is something which you have chosen for yourself. A businessman has chosen to play the role of a businessman. A student has chosen to play the role of a student. As a government officer, I have chosen to play the role of a government employee. Now this is the role which you have accepted 
which you have chosen and to which the society has given a sanction. The society has said, all right, we accept you in this role. And that is the role that you are supposed to pay, play properly. You have to play each one of this role like Amitabh Bachchan acting in a film. Same sincerity. Whether he comes for promotion of tourism in Gujarat or whether he is making a film, PA or whatever, the amount of dedication with which he, he, does, the, he does the acting, whatever role is given to him, people think that he is really like that. Can we do this in our life? Most diligently, most efficiently, without any alatsya, without any indolence, carelessness, if we can play our role properly, then this is the second dimension of karma yoga. Yoga ha karma shu kaushalam. Simple? So far so good. All of you are here with me or some are travelling outside through the mind. Some of you are travelling outside, I can see that. You know, mind is capable of having 60 different, totally, totally different thoughts in one minute. It is capable of doing that. From monkey to mother-in-law, all thoughts come within a minute. It keeps on jumping and that's why the technique of yoga. The basic definition of yoga says, yoga ha chitta vritti nirodaha. Yoga is a technique of controlling your mind. It is not a physical exercise, my dear friends. If you think your mind is making you happy or unhappy, if you think you are not getting sleep in the night, if you think you are restless, you are anxious, you are depressed, there cannot be any better technique other than yoga. Yoga. But how many people knew till they came here that yoga is a technique of controlling your mind? People think yoga is one kind of physical exercise, asana particularly. Yoga is a much larger subject than asana. So, this is the thing that we are supposed to do, role play, we have to do. Now there again, we are playing different roles, we have to keep a balance also. If you say that I cannot look after my parents because I have got a lot of work in the office, that is not keeping a balance. If you have chosen the role of a son or if it is given to you, I cannot say you have chosen because your parents gave you birth, so you are not chosen, you become a son of your parents. So even if some role is given to you by God, you cannot neglect that role. So you cannot neglect one role to the detriment of the other role. You have to keep a proper balance in life. All roles have to be played properly. Then only it's worth it. So balance in life is very much required in role play particularly. Keep a balance in life. Spare some time for your physical exercise so that you can play all your roles properly. Do some yoga, asana, pranayam, dhyan, whatever you can do. It's very good. Next point. Are you clear about the three points? Oh, sorry, two points. Okay. Two points, yeah. Good. I am glad you are alert. I thought you were sleeping. <laughs> the third point. The third point is, when you are doing your work, please focus on the present activity and not on the fruits of that activity. When you are, so I am sorry, I forgot to put this. Okay, I will also keep this so that you can write down at least the main point, you know. This was the first point that I gave you. In case if you want to use the same words, you can do so. Second is, whatever role we have chosen to play in life, uh, it should be performed most diligently without any laxity and with utmost care. And third is, our focus should be mainly on the present activity on hand and not on the fruit which that action is likely, likely to bring for us. When a student is studying for the examination, if he is always worried whether he will get a rank or not in the SSC board, then his action will be spoiled. Assure, uh, it is assured. When a student is studying, if on his mind he is always conscious of the fact whether he will get a rank or not 
his action will definitely be spoiled. He will never get a rank. Second example, just to enforce this, reinforce this point. If Sachin Tendulkar plays cricket with one hand in the, uh, with bat in one hand and with his eye on the scoreboard always, will he succeed or will he fail? He will fail. If he is looking at the scoreboard, ki bhai mera kitna hua, he will fail. He never looks at the scoreboard. He only looks at the ball which is coming. So, focusing on the present activity without thinking about the results of that activity, the fruits that which with that activity is likely to bring. Now, this is what is the real meaning when in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says that you have a right on the action, not on the fruits of it. That I will explain in the fourth point. But the third point is that if you do not focus on the present activity, your action, your activity is likely to be spoiled. You will not get the result which you want. All the time you are worried about the future. All the time you are worried about the results. Kya milega, kya hoga, kya nahi hoga. Are kyu chinta karna hai? Chodo sab, kaam karo apna. Do your work properly. If you do any activity like this, and this point I need not emphasize because there is a lot of discussion in the modern world about the power of now. And you must have also seen that famous book of Eckhart Tolle called Power of Now. Lot of discussion. What is this power of now? Power of now is nothing else but focusing on the present activity which is in your hand. Whatever you are doing. When you are in the office, you are totally engrossed. But as soon as you come back home, you are totally engrossed with your children, with your spouse. Whatever. If you are cooking, even if you are a great person, if you have chosen to go into the kitchen, do that most with most attention. But we have a lot of confusion here. We don't do one role properly. We keep on jumping from role to role. When you are doing something in the office, you remember the home. And at home, you remember the office. Many people are not able to get sleep in the night, thinking of what will happen tomorrow morning. You don't have to think about what will happen tomorrow morning. Just think about the role that you are going to play. So focus on the present activity and not the fruits of it. That is what is meant by karmaniye vadika rastu ma faleshu kadachana. That is the meaning of that. Okay? Now you will ask me, how did I, not me, as I told you, this is all given by my spiritual mentor. How did he think about all these points? How did such a comprehensive definition of karma yoga emerge? It has all emerged from his study of Bhagavad Gita very deep study of Bhagavad Gita. All the principles are enshrined in Bhagavad Gita. All these principles, six, all six of them, in various verses, in various chapters. They are all spread over. Okay, let's come to the fourth point. Acha, now, okay, let me go back uh, to third point only. You will ask me that if you don't worry about the fruits, does that mean that the fruits will not come? Not so. The fruits are bound to come. It is as sure as if you throw a ball and the ball bounces back with the same vengeance, with the same force with which you threw the ball and the ball came back. Action and reaction are equal and opposite. right? Similarly, whatever work you do, whatever activity you do is bound to give you results. There is no doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it. It is absolutely sure. So why worry about the result then? Okay. The fourth point, just one more question may come in this third point. If you say that we should not worry about the future, should I not be doing any kind of a goal setting? Somebody may ask. There are a lot of people personality trainers who insist on goal setting also, right? That goal setting is very important. You have to desire, you have to have a burning desire for achieving something, etc. All the young people would be interested in that. 
no the planning activity of planning setting your goal it is not a future activity it is an activity of the present it is a activity of planning which you do diligently when you are sitting to do planning for your life or when you are sitting to do planning for your entire years work to be put in for some examination then you have to focus on various facts okay i have got so many days with me i will study like this i will do like this all the facts and figures you keep it before you and then you do your planning properly then you realistically set your goal yes i can reach up to this now this itself is a present activity it is not a future activity so planning is not a future activity it's a present activity so you can always do planning planning is permitted when i say that don't expect the fruits doesn't mean that you don't do planning you have to set some goal before you okay now the fourth point acceptance of whatever results come as blessings of god as prasad of god je kai made jeevan ma e badu bhagwan ni prasadi mani ne swikare levano in spite of putting in your best efforts if the results are not forthcoming in spite of doing your best then you have no option but to accept it this is the first statement i will make no option but i will change it a little bit i will say that you better accept it why there is a reason for it suppose somebody appears for the examination he put in his best and he failed in the examination he never expected that he will fail in the examination he thought he was a very good student he was very good in his studies and he finds that he is failing in the exam now that result if he doesn't accept what kind of reactions will be there two types of reaction can be there one reaction is that he denies it can no 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 this cannot happen to me he denies it no i have not passed i have not failed i have passed suppose he starts telling everybody no no i have not failed i have passed is it going to help him overcome that problem no denial is not a solution for your future or he laments it dukhi ho jayega pure din rota rehta hai are bhagwan ye mere sath hi kyu hua this could be second reaction non accepting a result ye mere sath hi kyu hua this could be the two types of reactions both the reactions are not going to help him he is going to go back and back he is not going to go forward in life isn't it another example somebody gets cancer the doctor tells him one fine morning i am sorry mr so and so but you have been diagnosed with cancer and you will not live any longer or you will live for a few years or whatever now suppose that person says ki no i don't believe this this doctor is jhootha he doesn't know i cannot have cancer what happens then he doesn't take medicine he doesn't go for whatever treatment is required and what happens ultimately he will suffer he will suffer in the process whatever is the remaining part of his life also the quality of life will be very bad so he better accept it ki yes it is a fact of life now i must do something about it now my only job is to find out which is the best treatment available around so that i can be treated i can have a better quality of life isn't it or he starts weeping kuch nahi karna hai bas rote rehte hai kya fayda hai uska koi fayda nahi hai so earlier i said that you have no option but to accept the result now i am changing i am saying that you better accept the result it is in your advantage to accept the result there is a second reason why you should accept the result while we have full control on the activity on the action part of it when it comes to giving of results 
the results are connected to your karma not only in this birth but in all other past births as per the philosophy of indian wisdom there is a theory of sanchit karma and we have seen umpteen number of examples of people who are complete rogues they are cheating the society but they have everything in life family bhi acha hai beta bhi acha hai uska paisa bhi hai bahut sab kuch hai hoga ya nahi hota hai hota hai na how do you explain this you can only explain it by this particular wisdom which says that results are decided in this life because of actions of this birth plus a number of other births in the past life whatever now if it is so what is the point in lamenting and finding out ki bhai maine aisa kya bura kiya hai ki mere ko ye mila koi janne ki zarurat nahi hai chup chap baitho aap jo hai usko accept kar lo aage badho you to you know this theory of free will versus destiny it is a very interesting debate how much of free will do we have how much do we depend on destiny and when i ask my spiritual mentor ki what is the use of understanding the destiny theory if it is going to make, make you fatalistic he says destiny theory is not to make you fatalistic destiny theory is not to make you fatalistic destiny theory is there to give you solace in case if in spite of your doing best the results don't come that is called destiny theory so you have to explain it on destiny only ke hase apna naseeb ma nahi hoy au mani ne apne agad vadvano karu ke nahi okay some more dimension of why accept result how many of you have distrust in the system of god which manages all this planets galaxies the sun rises exactly as per the time schedule not even 1 minute late what a perfection in that system have you ever thought about it the galaxies are being run two stars they don't come closer to each other otherwise we would be destroyed if the sun the star of sun comes closer to any other star even a wee bit we all would be finished that perfect balance millions and millions of cells are produced in our body every day who creates them and what kind of a perfection is there what kind of a scientific knowledge is involved in creation have you ever thought about it now the same creation is also managing the justice system of god karma karma phal that is a justice system of god you have no reason to doubt it why because he has been successfully managing some em other empire if suppose mukesh ambani who is a successful entrepreneur he tries his hand on one industry and he fails people will not blame him no no he cannot do this he is a very successful entrepreneur so like that we have to trust god we cannot blame god we have to trust that justice system and moment you go away from the trust in the justice system of god you will get into worry i always say ke chinta etle bhagwan ma avishwas chinta karvi etle bhagwan ma avishwas karvo there is no reason for us to doubt this system it is perfect when we say ke why me we are doubting the justice system of god ke bhai mane jaavu sa mate thayu that means we are doubting the justice system of god bhai kai hase etla mate to thayu na aa janam ma nahi to gaya janam ma ase karu so this is why we have to accept we have to have full trust in the justice system of god we cannot say no to that next point how do you know that god doesn't have better designs for you in giving you something adverse some time ago i uh, i told a press fellow about it i i think they printed a story in the local paper 
you know, I, I would like to give that example so that it's a motivation for other students, you know. After my SSC, I had a goal of, of course, uh, doing IAS right from my SSC days. But since I wanted to spare some time for general knowledge and other activity, I chose commerce as a faculty. And in commerce, the study burden was not much. We used to just read for last 15 days and get distinction. There was no problem. My teacher is also here, Mr. M.T. Patel from HL Commerce, so he can vouch for it, you know. We used to take it easy, so. But I thought I needed some money to support myself also because my father had retired by then. I thought, let me try for a bank clerk's job. So the Banking Service Recruitment Board, they came out with an advertisement for a bank clerk's job. And I applied. There was a written test. I appeared for the written test. And you would be surprised that I was not even called for the interview. It's not that I failed in the final interview where somebody must have managed it, you know. Somebody else must have managed to get in. But I failed in the written test itself. In retrospect, I find now that if I had made it to a clerk's job, probably I would have deviated from my main goal and I would have remained a bank manager even today. My apologies to some uh, State Bank of India people who are here. So how do you know that if some adverse result comes to you, it is not for your benefit? How do you know God's designs for you? He has better designs for you. He has a better future for you. And that's why he gives you this kind of a shock. He wants you to learn a lesson or two from life. He wants you to put in hard work. And that's why he's failing you sometimes. So that is also the reason why you should accept this result. One beautiful story I want to tell you now. We have some time now. So let me tell you a very beautiful story about acceptance. In olden times, we had some kings. And I am very fond of reading the stories of kings because they were so beautiful. The story of king, queen, his minister, Akbar, Birbal, all these stories are so beautiful. Everybody likes it. And this king had very wise minister, some IAS officer of that time. Very wise minister. At that time, the, the Sachivs were called ministers because there was only one king. Nowadays, of course, we have lost that uh, title of minister. IAS officers, as IAS officers, we have lost this title of minister. We have been called now Sachivs, secretaries. But that time, they were called ministers, Pradhan or Mantri. So, Raja ka ek mantri tha, bahut wise admi tha, itna wise admi. And his philosophy in life was, whatever happens is for good. Je kahi tha, ite sara mathe. This was his philosophy in life. And every time, whenever there was a crisis in the kingdom, when he used to advise the king, he used to say, ki, whatever happens is for good. And the king never understood the meaning of this. He used to shrug him off. Ki, how can that happen? He never used to like this comment. Whatever happens is for good. The minister said, all right, when the time comes, you will also understand the meaning of this statement. It so happened, one day, the king and the minister and all entire party, all the people, they went to forest for hunting. Hunting was a favorite pastime. Nowadays, of course, uh, Kings are not there, but the ministers, they go for a holiday in USA. But that time, hunting was a favorite pastime of kings. So they went for a hunting, and it so happened that by accident, one of the fingers of the king got cut. And the minister immediately said, all is well. <laughs> and the king got infuriated. He said, what the hell do you mean? I am in agony, my hand, my finger is cut, and you are saying all is well? What's this nonsense? He told his people, catch this fellow, he's gone mad or what? Put him behind the bars. Instantly he was put behind the bars. He was taken away, put behind the bars. 
then of course it was not so easy for the king to come back so he continued his journey in the forest continued to do some more hunting after some time it so happened that it was dark and the king got separated from his party all the other people got left behind and the king was separated he lost his way in the forest when he lost his way then he was worried after some time he found some tribals who were approaching him local tribals who look very jungly they look so uh, unpalatable you know so uh, barbaric so the king was very scared they came they caught the king took him away took him to the king of the tribals the king said i am the king of this samrajya he says no no we don't understand all this our samrajya is different our king is different come along he was taken to the king of tribals wherein he was presented and his people told the king ke sir in your dharmik kriya yagna you were looking for a narbali and we have found one and the king was pleased he immediately ordered his vaidyas or doctors whoever were there you know people who are physicians of those time he said please check this fellow out if he is okay for balidan and when they checked him out they found his one limb was missing and he was released immediately immediately he was released he said this is no good for us we need a sarvanga sampurna person for becoming a bali of the yagna narbali so this fellow is no good let him go he was released can you imagine what would have been his first action after that what was his first action he asked he somehow found his way to the kingdom and moment he went to his kingdom the first order he made was please bring this minister with full respect to me and that minister was brought to him he said pranam to him and said that i really understand now the meaning of what you said that whatever god does is for better but he says i have one doubt can you please clarify my doubt now he has become a gyani the king has a exalted view about uh, the minister now he says i have a doubt can you please uh, solve my doubt he says yes what doubt he says i can understand that there was something good in my finger being cut but what was so good in my imprisoning you my sending you to jail isme kya acha hua and the minister immediately said ke look here if i was not put into the prison i would have been probably been with you only when you are lost <laughs> and the tribals would have let you go but they would have caught me and i would have been dead by now so this is the meaning of all is well please understand whatever god does is always for good we have no reason to actually think that it is not in our benefit god wants us to learn a lesson or two probably and that lesson never goes west no incident in your life is a west if you learn something out of it so this is what is acceptance of whatever result comes as prasad of god agreed the fifth dimension now suppose you put in some amount of action you did your best and the results you get were extraordinary extraordinary results you got you were only working for 6 hours a day but god bestowed you with a lot of wealth your business was very successful you made a lot of money or you were working all night but others were also working but you got a nobel nobel prize you are a professor and you get a nobel prize others did not get then also never have ego or doership so except uh, absence of sense of doership or ego is the fifth dimension of karma yoga absence of doership i did it i did it मेरा ये सब मेरा किया कराया है आई एम ए सेल्फ मेड मैन टेल मी मिस्टर सेल्फ मेड मैन 
who is the one who gave you birth number 1 tell me mr self made man who is your teacher who taught you all this who taught you how to learn who taught you how to eat tell me mr self made man who are your friends who supported you and last of all tell me mr self made man that who gave you birth on this earth where there was oxygen so many things in life whatever we achieve it is not possible because of one person ever never it is only possible because of contributions of too many people starting from your parents to teachers to friends society your relatives so many people they have a role to play in your upbringing and in whatever success you get somebody says he makes a big bungalow takes us around on the day of vastu pujan and says i made this bungalow did he make it or did the carpenters and the masons make it what did he do at the most he gave money which also must have been borrowed from state bank of india <laughs> and if he had his own money that also must have come as fruits of past karma from god so what is it that we are trying to do why have ego or sense of doership we are nobody actually without oxygen without water without this flora and fauna on this earth where would we have been all this is god's contribution to us so we never acknowledge god's contribution we never acknowledge parents contribution and we make big speeches that i made this possible i did this absence of ego doership is fifth dimension of karma yoga and now the last one whatever fruits you get in life whether it is wealth credit or knowledge you must share it with others freely as much as you can whatever share in all the religions of the world including hindu muslim christian sab mein there is an importance of giving alms donations khairat whatever you call it बहुत इंपॉर्टेंस है इस चीज का और ये प्रिंसिपल कर्मयोग का जो इसमें लिया गया है वो इट इज टेकन फ्रॉम द थियोरी ऑफ यज्ञ विच इज प्रोपाउंडेड इन भगवत गीता व्हाट इज द थियोरी ऑफ यज्ञ यज्ञ थियोरी इज दैट इन यज्ञ ईच वन गिव्स एन ऑब्लेशन आहुति व्हेन यू गो टू समबडी इज प्लेस फॉर यज्ञ यू आर आस्ट कि भाई तमे पण आहुति आपो यू आल्सो टेक सम जव एंड पुट इट इनटू द into the vedi why because that yagna is only paripurna when everybody gives ahuti even at the time of final uh, offering everybody stands up everybody touches whatever is the offering which is to be put into the vedi and that's how the yagna is made and lord krishna in bhagavad gita has said this entire world is a yagna it is a joint effort it is a cooperative venture of all of us and each one should try to put in one's best one should give whatever is possible jo bhi apne se hota hai wo usko acha banane ke liye prayatna karna chahiye we should try to give whatever best we can so try to give out of whatever god has given you paisa hai to paisa do knowledge hai to knowledge do अगर क्रेडिट भी मिल जाती है तो शेयर इट विथ योर कलीग्स शेयर इट विथ एवरी वन इट्स नॉट आई वुड इट इट ऑल माय कलीग्स माय टीम माय सबोर्डिनेट्स इवन अ स्मॉल मैन इन योर ऑफिस एज अ रोल टू प्ले दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट शेयरिंग विदाउट दिस कर्मयोग इज नॉट कंप्लीट सो इन शॉर्ट दिस इज यू नो सम पीपल मे से दैट दिस सिक्स डायमेंशन वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रिमेंबर i have given a one sentence definition of karma yoga here any activity done without selfishness without carelessness and without ego 
can become karma yoga a state of blissful action if you follow these three principles any activity done without selfishness without carelessness and without ego this is a shorter definition of karma yoga i am sure you can remember this remember three words only no selfishness no carelessness no ego and you have done your karma yoga i'm sure all of you will get something out of this and i'm sure you will achieve some amount of bliss in your life thank you very much thank you questions please anyone yeah in ramayana it is said that uh, self will and uh, uh, this uh, what we call as the uh, adrashti phala or what we say our destiny we can change our destiny except only in three circumstances by hard work and uh, faith in the god and all those things in these three circumstances are there that is about birth death and marriage these are the three places where we cannot change the destiny at every other stage we can change the destiny by hard work that is what valmiki has said to rama in ramayana what is your opinion no actually this uh, destiny versus free will is an endless debate i asked the same question and the reply i got was ki yes there are certain things which are non changeable but why get into that you know for example you say that death is inevitable or death is decided by destiny the date of death does that mean that i stop taking treatment no we don't know what is in store for us so never get into never try to know what is in your destiny because if you accept death as a, a part of destiny and not free will you will not go to a hospital you will never take a treatment you should take treatment our job is not to worry about it we have to struggle against death also that is a part of karma yoga so my suggestion would be that just remember one thing that while karma is limited to this birth but the phala is spread over several births just remember that there is no nothing called absolute destiny destiny is also equal to accumulated karmas sanchit karma the phala of sanchit karma just remember that much right yes please mm, is karma yog is giving happiness is karma yog giving happiness yes it gives a lot of bliss uh, if yes then what about the all workers they are below the poverty line they are working i think all of the six dimensions with more diligently Uh, carelessness without ego and selfishness then what about them they born in uh, poor poverty and they also die in the poverty then what about them very good question please sit down look here what is your definition of happiness what is your definition of happiness most people connect happiness with money wealth riches but do you know how many people are not able to get sleep in their air conditioned bedrooms and how do you know for sure that this worker who is who you found on find on the road his children are also moving around no education for them how do you know he is not experiencing a bliss in the night if he is following all these principles but if he has a feeling of resentment in his heart that bhagwan ne mujhe aisa kyun diya hai why am i not rich if he is only sleeping on the footpath 
but spending sleepless night looking at the bungalow of somebody, then he is not following Karma Yoga principle. But those workers who follow Karma Yoga principles, they are always blissful. And no money is required to make them blissful. Money has no connection with happiness. Okay? No more questions? I thought, yeah. I think we can limit it to the topic for today, you know. Nee, for this topic only, I just want to talk to you. Because no. in education, there is so much uh, corruptions and uh, donations are there. If this is a different question. Let us limit ourselves to Karma Yoga topic today. Yes, okay? Forget about my being a government officer here. I am a teacher of uh, Karma Yoga today. Please forget it, you know. Why do you confuse roles? I just told you, don't confuse roles, okay? When I am speaking on education policy, you can raise this question, okay? Let's not talk about it. Anybody else? Yeah, please. How to come, how to come, how to come out of ego? The best way to come out of ego is that in whatever successful results you get in life, analyze. Before you express your ego, you analyze that is it I who did it or is it a contribution of many people? The moment you do this analysis, your ego will disappear. Do a proper analysis, thinking process in your mind. For anything that you achieve in life, for anything, and you will find that it is contribution of many people. This is the best way of removing ego, analytical mind. Okay? Yeah. राइट यस प्लीज समी सर वाई बेड थिंग्स हेपन टू गुड पीपल इफ इट इज ओनली ड्यू टू सम पास्ट कर्मास कैन ए गुड मैन डू समथिंग टू मिटिगेट द मिजरी कास्ट बाई पास्ट कर्मा यू कैन यू कैन वॉट्स दैट सर इफ समबडी इज सफरिंग वी हेव नो रीजन टू नॉट हेल्प हिम बाय सेंग की ही इज सफरिंग बिकॉज ऑफ इज पास्ट कर्मा वी हेव टू इम्प्रूव अवर कर्मा कोई मणस दुखी हो तो एना पास्ट कर्म ने कारण भले हे पर एनु दुख एक्सप्लेन करने पास्ट कर्म नहीं वपरवा वी हेव टू डू समथिंग अबाउट हेल्पिंग हिम बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू मेक अवर कर्मा ही हिमसेल्फ ही हिमसेल्फ या ही केन डू अ लॉट ही केन थिंक he can go to a teacher he can go to a mentor he can say tell me what should i do in such a situation i am in a soup he can talk to a friend he can go anywhere and he has to what find a guidance sir, sir, what will you advise sorry suppose you are that teacher yeah what will you advise i'll ad i will analyze the situation and say that look here your failure could have been caused by this 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 factor now will you please make an action plan to go from here to here start tomorrow this is what i'll advise him okay, okay? Yeah, Ranjana, I'll come to you. Huh? Yes, Ranjana. Yeah. I would first like to compliment you for a wonderful exposition of what is karma yoga. It's a very simple kind of definition that you have evolved and very very acceptable. But as this is a topic on which I have been constantly thinking in my life and asking so many gurus, and I have many many doubts about many things, including karma. कर्मणे वादिकार से माँ फलेशु कदाचन एंड आफ्टर थिंकिंग अ लॉट पर हैप्स आई हैव कम टू अ काइंड ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट इफ एन इंडिविजुअल इज टारगेटिंग एट अ कर्म आई एम सॉरी एट अ फलर व्हिच इज अ वेरी पर्सनलाइज काइंड ऑफ फलर दैट इज नॉट परमिटेड इन दिस थियरी ऑफ कर्म योगा बट इफ इट इज अ काइंड ऑफ कलेक्टिव फलर दैट समबडी इज टारगेटिंग एट then perhaps it would be included in this theory of karma yoga and the example that i would give is any simple person striving to collect money to promote good standards in personal life 
is something which is not really permitted under karma yoga but gandhi after doing all the good things selfless selflessly and carefully ultimately his goal was something very very collective freedom for india and perhaps that's why when we think of any karma yogi we perhaps think of think of gandhi what's your comment sir very good look uh, i agree on one thing that when you are working for a larger goal community goal or a country's goal then the emotions you can generate in yourself and in others is certainly much more powerful is far more powerful 100% there is no doubt of, about it and you can make a much larger impact on the society the people would really respect you people would revere you when that is in your goal but certainly that does not exclude this kind of a situation in which a normal human being also while doing his daily routine work can adopt this principles of karma yoga and this is also bound to give him result the result is in terms of happiness blissful action karma yoga is a path of blissful action while remaining happy always you can perform now this is certainly possible and that's why i said even sakam karma karma in which you are taking salary that is also possible to be done with karma yoga attitude yes please gentlemen and and yeah sorry doer and the goal and fruit fruit oh that's a simple so what what according to you is uh, difference between goal and fruit Because goal and fruit yeah goal is something which you plan to achieve in your life yeah fruit is something which has actually come fruit sir, is the result of the go- uh, result of the action but goal uh, is an activity of planning my, while fruit is an outcome of an activity okay yes please yeah, yeah. action and contradiction you mean uh, 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 the discordance between what you think what you speak and what you do that is what you mean what is it that you mean Now what we do sorry so why do we have contradiction of action and advice action and advice means what i speak i don't follow that is what you mean i don't know so many people do that yeah so many people do it because they are agnan they don't know how much of harm they are causing to themselves by not aligning their thought process their speech and their action they are losers the society is only an incidental victim of it but the person who doesn't do what he thinks a person who doesn't speak what he thinks is a loser himself yes young boy yeah yeah yes uh, i have learned the mind power from jitendra dia sir uh, the always in the very first we are starting we uh, we have done the meditation and they told us in meditation you have to only visualization and in visualization you have to just think about the result the mind power will automatically turn the process uh, it is we just have to visualize the result then what about uh, where is the karma well i don't want to comment about other theories which are going around i'm sorry no no i don't want to comment on that but i only wanted to teach you what is the genuine scriptural advice given in our scriptures so i don't want to comment about anybody else's theories right please yeah sir when we give a uh, money to any beggar so at that time our intention is good that we are doing some uh, some good work i mean kind work but uh, there, there is uh, any negative effects on that beggar he is do this uh, uh, this act uh, in next time so it is karma you go or not okay i understand what you are trying to tell me look here you know when you are trying to help somebody you are only doing what you think is the right thing for you to do right 
you don't have to worry about everybody and anybody in the society. If that beggar, after taking money from you, he goes and drinks liquor, you are not responsible. He is responsible for his own action. But you will certainly get the punya karma for whatever you are given. There is no doubt about it. Okay? Yes, gentlemen, there. A very good evening to you, sir. My question is that uh, I am living in this present scenario. This is my present birth. At times, if I don't get my desired results, and if I live it upon my past births, okay, probably I must have done something for which I am barred from the desired results. Am I not following a policy of escapism into this? It's not. It's not. It's not. As I explained to you, you have to do your best. Whatever circumstances are there in your life, you have to do your best. But after doing your best, if results are not forthcoming, you don't have to really worry about it. If you are not achieving your desired goal in this life, maybe you will achieve it in the next life. But it is an endless journey. And actually in Bhagavad Gita it is said that we don't die, we are always there. We change roles, we change bodies, we change clothes, something like we change clothes, you know. So it goes on, the journey goes on. And there is also a beautiful expression in Bhagavad Gita which says that, in fact Arjuna asks a specific question, that suppose I am on the path of yoga and I have arrived at a certain level and I don't achieve the fi final liberation. Does it mean that everything will go west? And the reply given by Lord is, no, it does not go west. It will be carried on in your next birth. We carry sanskara in our next birth. And that is why you find that Adi Shankaracharya, at the age of 17 years, he had finished writing commentaries on all the Upanishads, all Dasa Upanishads, 10 Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita. He wrote commentaries on Brahma Sutra. He wrote a fresh scripture called Vivek Chudamani. All this was possible for him to do at the age of 17 years. Why? Because he must have carried his sanskara over past so many births. And then came a time when he could do all this. So it is always possible to achieve your goal, if not in this birth, in the next birth. But the journey has to continue. Never stop. Yeah. We will have last uh, one or two questions. Yeah. Only. Yeah. Sir, you said that all the fruits in this life is a result of karma of our previous lives. So how much ever we work hard in this life, we never know what we are going to become in our never next life. You so, never I, so I say why don't we just live this life according to our wish rather than doing what's right or what's hard that's, work. That's what I am saying. I said right in the beginning if you have noticed. Somebody may ask, why should I do karma yoga? I am happy as it is. If you are happy, you are blissful, no need to do karma yoga. But if at any stage in your life, you find you are miserable, you are anxious, you are not able to gain satisfaction out of life, then come back to the theory of karma yoga. Otherwise, live your life the way you want it. Okay? Thank you. No, I think we'll... we'll uh, okay, Mr. Ladwa, yeah. into the government servants. Now, I thought uh, uh, if the confidential reports which are submitted every year, if the parameters for uh, assessment of the government servant is based on these principles, would it not make him a better karma yogi? I think you are again confusing role, my role as a bureaucrat. This is a question addressed to a bureaucrat, not to a yoga teacher. Thank okay? you. Anyway, friends, yes, yeah. no, I think we will call it a day. I'm sorry because a lot of other people have to go. So if anybody has got some more questions, maybe you can ask me individually. Well, I would like to, first of all, thank AMA for organizing this forum and for giving me an opportunity to share some, something which I have. Uh, also, I think the State Bank of India people, they are here. How many of SBI people are here? Okay, only a few of them. They had requested if they could also join. I said most welcome. So they are also here. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you. We'll meet again. Thank you very much.